Hi everyone, my name is Saurabh Jha. I am presently pursuing my PhD from Coventry University. And I am pleased to be given an opportunity to present to you all today. In my poster presentation today, I'll be focusing on decarbonization pathways for heavy goods vehicles or HGVs. I will be covering a summary of my understanding of the decarbonization pathways and I'll also be making a case for a holistic and a socio-technical approach needed for building such pathways. As we all know, climate change is a clear and present danger. As you can see from these images on the left hand side, uh, they uh, are from the IPCC sixth assessment report, which came out earlier this year in August. And it shows uh, the acute changes in the global temperature, the mean precipitation and the soil moisture, which uh, are expected to happen uh, in, in, uh, in the case uh, of continued uh, uh, emissions. Now, um, if you look at the uh, imperatives which are there, it obviously applies equally to everyone since uh, to all the segments across industries uh, in terms of achieving net zero by 2050 if we have to avoid such a situation. Now, within uh, uh, the various industry sectors, transportation contributes to about a quarter of total emissions and it has also been uh, one of the fastest growing. Uh, hence, it becomes very important to understand which are the key sectors or segments within transportation which can uh, which needs to be addressed and within the transport segment it has also been noticed that while all the projections show a quite steep decline for the passenger transport but for the road freight uh, segment the decline is not that steep in decline in uh, emissions and within um, the road freight sector as well it has been found that uh, gvs have a disproportionate share of emissions having only 25 percent of vehicle share but uh, close to 70 to 75 percent of uh, emission share uh, within the road freight uh, segment now there are various technologies which are available right now uh, like the battery electric the fuel cell electric or the catenary electric or even the hydrogen based internal combustion engine and these technologies may or may not provide net zero emissions by 2050 for HGVs. Uh, the, there is no clear, there's no consensus when it comes to the recent research reports by uh, uh, various uh, official government bodies or even the research done by uh, uh, across various researchers as well. Uh, there is uh, there are multiple uh, uh, technology, uh, there are a lot of variation in the mix of technology by 2050 and even in the technology for the transition pathway to 2050 as well. Uh, however, one thing is pretty clear that the adoption will depend on the, the utility which is provided by these new technologies. Uh, and uh, obviously one of the things which will be compared, uh, they will be compared against is the utility which is provided by the incumbent technology, which is the diesel based internal combustion engines. Now, one of the ways to uh, project the adoption uh, is uh, was found to be transport models. And there are various transport models in place. And it was also found that they are very, uh, there are lots of different, uh, they're, they're differing a lot in terms of the scope of these transport models. While some models focused only on the vehicle, some models focused on a combination of vehicle and the energy system. Uh, so what was found, uh, the gap which was found that uh, they were not uh, considering uh, taking a system level approach uh, by covering all the vehicle, uh, all systems, including vehicle energy and road freight systems. Uh, because until you do not take a system level approach, you cannot really bring overall socio-technical approach to adoption of any new technology. And it was also found that uh, when these transport models are being built, uh, they have essentially three key steps. One is that they project the demand of vehicles and then they allocate the technology across this demand in step two and in step three based on the adoption uh, uh, based on the allocation they project the emissions based on the emission factor of this technology now in the step two when they allocate the demand across various technologies what was found that uh, the they uh, while they used uh, many of them used a consumer choice model where they used various say, preference factors to build a choice model and then based on that they allocated the demand uh, of techno uh, uh, technology to demand and there was a lack of comprehensiveness in those utility factors across uh, research focused on hgv adoption and hgv emission prediction so uh, based on the understanding uh, and the literature review a, a model was built and the, uh, when i say model it was the key reference blocks were identified 
uh, and as a part of my ongoing research i will be further building on these uh, reference blocks and, and and building the actual model but uh, based on these reference blocks which were identified uh, the idea was to not only cover a system level approach but also have a comprehensive set of utility factors uh, when it comes to building the choice model so such a model can not only be used to project the adoption uh, in a more holistic way and and also uh, project the emissions as well uh, these models can also be used for uh, uh, validating any new solutions which can also be identified in the run up to 2050 so effectiveness and the impact of these new solutions on the overall adoption and the overall emissions can also be identified using such a holistic model so uh, that brings to the end of my poster presentation and um, I would like to thank you all for your time and uh, I will also like to request you to uh, please uh, take your time if possible to fill a very small survey which I have built, uh, anonymous survey which is hardly you know, one or two, uh, two pages uh, long and if you can please share your input it will be very helpful for my research uh, because that survey is related to the, the preference factors for uh, GVs so, and I will be sharing the link uh, for that survey in the chat window. So thank you for your time and I'll be happy to take any questions. Thanks.